Welcome back to some new r slash malicious compliance stories, where people comply to the letter, but not the spirit of a request. I hope you had a great day. The first story is called Windows Updates. I was responsible for the desktops in a small 30-ish employee division of a software company, among many other things. There was this employee that was not in operations and was a programmer that continually nitpicked how I did things. We shall call him Dan. Windows updates were not always done automatically. I would go around a couple of times a week and remind the employees to do them. This was in the mid 2000s. Everyone was an admin on their PCs because of programmer requirements to test new software from time to time. We had administrative and support staff as well. Windows was always set to update overnight when the PCs were not being used overnight when they were left alone. However, many of the employees listened to Dan and turned their PCs off at night after I reminded them that the updates would run overnight and not listen to him. Dan then went to the boss saying updates were not being done in a timely manner. Boss calls me into his office and tells me that Windows updates were not being done in a timely manner according to Dan. I didn't say a thing about Dan telling everyone to turn their PCs off at night to the boss even after I told them not to. The boss always listened to Dan and thought he knew more than anyone in the office. The boss was a sales guy more than anything. So arguing was pointless. I said no problem, I will take care of it. And this is where the malicious compliance starts. As I did my weekly rounds with everyone and their PCs, I updated their settings for updates to be Wednesday morning at 10 am. Most folks didn't mess with the stuff or have any idea what to do or change it. But they listened to Dan about turning off their PC even though I said to leave it on for updates so it didn't affect their daily work. Well, after about two weeks of the updates running in the middle of the morning on Wednesdays, folks started to complain to me about the updates running. I didn't explain anything to anyone. I said Dan didn't think updates were done in a timely manner and to ask Dan why they are running on Wednesdays at 10 am. He didn't say a word and went straight to the boss, even though the programmers he worked with were most affected. Boss calls me into the office and I laid it all out on the table. Then he told everyone to turn the PCs off when they left and that was when the updates ran and you told me to make sure all the updates ran. He smiled, laughed and realized what he and Dan had done. He told me to change it back to overnight and that he would talk to Dan. I went around the following week and undid what was done and said the boss said to leave the PCs on overnight and it wouldn't happen again. We still had issues with Dan on stuff from time to time, but he mentioned this one incident with me during his retirement luncheon. The next story is called Wash, Rinse, Repeat. In the 1980s I was the general manager of a cable television company. Of all the reports we had to generate for our corporate office, the converter reconciliation report was probably the most important. Every cable TV office in nearly every company had to complete one monthly. If you are of a certain age, you'll remember the converter boxes that connected the TV and the cable so that the customer could tune all the channels. Well, let me tell you, they were expensive and we had to account for every one of them every month. Many were in customers homes, but others were in technicians trucks, in inventory, in repair, lost, stolen and so on. The report told us how much of this important asset was in use and where it was. It had to be correct and it had to be in corporate sense monthly without fail. The company was run by a bunch of disorganized idiots. Every month I would submit this important report to corporate and they would call, wanting to know where it was and why I hadn't completed it. Every month I would have to send them another. And they would call again, angry, and I would send another. Wash, rinse, repeat. Four or five times every month they would lose my report and call, threatening to fire me for not getting the report in on time. I was always in trouble for allegedly not sending my report. I had enough of this corporate PS. So I took the completed report and made 22 photocopies of it. 22 being the average number of work days in a month. I put one in each of the 22 envelopes addressed to the corporate office put postage on each envelope and then made sure that in each day's outgoing mail one report was sent. Sure enough, the angry phone call came. Where's your monthly report? Should be in your mailbox. Did you check? Oh, here it is. Okay, thanks. A few days later, another call. Where's your monthly report? Should be in your mailbox, boss. Did you check? Oh, here it is. Okay, thanks. Wash, rinse, repeat. 
Finally, after about 3 weeks, I get a phone call. Why do I have a stack of the same report? I just always want you to have one handy boss. After that, they quit losing my report. The third story is called Bad Parenting. For a bit of context, I work in urgent care as a physician. I take my job very seriously, but urgent care is for urgent things. That's a no-brainer. So when our dad came today with two young girls to our urgent care center and told me one of them was sick, I, of course, took him very seriously. As usual, I call in the next patient. That happens to be a 13-year-old girl, accompanied by her sister of a similar age and her dad. Dad tells me they came because the girl said her tummy hurts and starts telling the girl about how the doctor is going to find the truth about whether her tummy hurts or it's a lie. Sort of like, this is your last chance to come out and say you made it up. Dad starts to tell me about how the two girls each said they felt bad at the same time when he told them to clean up their room. One said she had a headache and the other said she had a tummy ache. So the dad thought the reasonable thing to do was to bring their kids to the ER so a doctor extracts a confession, rather than making his job as a dad and seeing they clearly made it up on the spot to get out of their chores. And well, since I take my job very seriously and there was a chance they may not be wasting my time, I made sure to make a very thorough examination. And I couldn't rule out gastroenteritis as the source of this obviously real stomach egg that was nowhere to be found. The dad was trying to get a gotcha. He ended up getting recommended he makes sure his kid is well hydrated, rests, doesn't make any straining activities and eats only if she feels like it for the day. And if she keeps feeling bad tomorrow, they could consider missing a day of school. Also, she should rest, but there is no problem if she uses her computer or tablet, as that won't make the stomach ache worse. If you make me educate your kids, you are wrong expecting me to do it well. I hope he learned not to waste emergency care resources instead of doing his job as a parent. The last story is called All the Overtime. This happened a couple of years ago, when I was 19 to 20, somewhere around then. As a real lad, I got a job working at a local superstore while attending college. I was a cashier. It was bad, but honestly wasn't as bad as it could have been. My immediate manager had protected cashiers from the higher ups. As time went on, as it does, eventually the dreaded holiday season came around. Thanksgiving week to be exact. I got the week off of school due to the holidays and was scheduled to work a juicy 40 hours that week, but unfortunately was scheduled to work all of Thanksgiving and Black Friday. My schedule had first days off, but Thanksgiving falls on a first day and I was being forced to work. The good news is, at least they fed us a ton of food in the break room. That was honestly nice, but I was bummed that I had to miss the holiday with family since I had prepared to have that day off as I thought I would. Now, before we get into the malicious compliance, a quick note. The store did not allow overtime. You were given extra lunches, sent home early, whatever they had to do to avoid paying out. If you got overtime, you were either lucky or you had a major problem you were being made to handle. Management was salaried and the enlisted workers were lucky to get over 38 hours. No extra money for the folks in adventures. As we are a major store that caters to everything from groceries to electronics, we prepare for a very long week that tends to mark the hustle and bustle of the holiday season as a whole. The energy is pretty low, as we all really dread this time of year, and I am extra nervous. This is my first retail job at the front lines during the holidays, and I heard all the horror stories about what is coming. The store manager gathers up a lot of the workers for a quick announcement that Monday. He tells us that essentially we are really behind and have a ton of work to do and this is going to be a rough and wild week. So he is authorizing any and all overtime across all departments from today until Sunday. He told the managers and the department heads that if any employee wanted to work, let them work. We need the coverage. Later on, we would discover what he meant was letting us come in our days off to work an extra shift or two, take on a nice 8 hours to our paychecks. Oops. If an employee wants to work a shift, let them work. And, oh boy, did we want to work. Let me tell you, we went crazy. I pulled six doubles that week. Someone parked their RV in the parking lot and worked what had most likely be forbidden due to labor laws. People were working maximum hours. One day I worked so long that our manager gave me free lunch breaks. Dozens of people jumped at this opportunity. 
The next day I came in and saw the overnight guy still petering around. We milk that week for every hour, every cent of possible overtime. I don't recall all the numbers and such directly, but I think I went from a 72 hour paycheck to one that had about 118. And around 42 was overtime, which was paid one and a half. Also, if you work on Thanksgiving, you are given a single use 25% off coupon to use in the store on one big order. Since I used my overtime on stuff to buy in the store, I felt like I earned an extra 25% on top of that. Management let it ham. No one said anything to the store manager that week and he sat in his office. It was two days after that week that some corporate suit showed up and gave him a verbal beating when they realized he blatantly authorized that. I think early on he realized his mistake, but the die was cast. And truth be told, we did need to get the work done. All that overtime and we barely were ready for the open door on Black Friday. He was mad and shouted at a couple of managers after he got yelled at, asking why they let us work so much. But they just shrugged. If an employee wants to work a shift, let them. It was immediately dropped and was clear it would never be allowed again and policy will remain as it was. I bought a TV and over a month of groceries, Christmas gifts for everyone, a new car battery, two new tires and some random things here and there for myself. It was worth it. I'd do it again in a heartbeat. Thanks for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please don't forget to leave a like, comment and subscribe. And if you have time, watch another one of my videos. And now I hope you have a great day. See you soon. Bye bye.